what I have seen that people are very much confused about retrograde planets. Why is the confusion? God knows. Once again, not listening things properly is the root reason. Not reading things properly is the root reason. Because not only new people, even practitioners are very much confused about retrogression. Let's understand one thing very clear. That planet who is retrograde is having cheshtabal. What means cheshtabal? Cheshta means desire. So basically it means that all the wishes and desires related to the planet will be fulfilled. Right? So planet who is retrograde, whatever are your wishes and desires related to that planet, those planet, those wishes and desires will be fulfilled for sure. Point. Secondarily, like talking of mundane astrology, you notice if any decision is made when a planet is retrograde, generally that decision is either taken back or modified. This works in natal horoscope also. This I always teach that a retrograde planet indicate mistakes of your life. Generally in the area signified by retrograde planet, you take decisions which you repent. You take decisions which you later on want to undo. You take decisions from which you back off later on. So whenever you see a retrograde planet, you have to become more careful while taking decisions in those areas. For that example, 10th Lord is retrograde. You have to be extra careful while taking professional decisions as you may repent it later on. You may want to run from it later on. So this is the second point with respect to retrogression. Third thing is retrogression generally indicates long life. So one thing you understand that whatever the retrograde planet is indicating that is going to sustain for very long. For an example, if the 10th Lord is retrograde, generally people work up to the age of 60, 65, then they retire. But if the 10th Lord is retrograde, then generally people, you will see that they are working at their end times also. They are working even, you know, one, two weeks before their last time as well. Not only when the 10th Lord is retrograde, when retrograde planet is in 10th house and all of that. So it gives longevity and it makes sure that whatever that planet indicates, that sustains for long. So say for marriage, it is very good that person is generally married throughout their lifetime and they have the company and support of their life partner or people around them. Like for example, the wife may also die, the husband may also die, but other people will be there in their life to take the place of companion, if you know what I mean, right, will be there. So the results are long lasting and speciality with retrogression is retrogression also gives multiplicity like exaltation. Like exaltation indicates that everything is multiplied by three. Retrogression also indicates that everything is multiplied by three. So if the 11th Lord is retrograde, three sources of income are there. If the 7th Lord is retrograde, three or multiple marriages, you should say multiple marriages. Right, so these are few specific points related to retrograde planet. Three, four things are there. Though retrograde planet can, can be taught in depth. I have taught a two, three day class on retrograde planets also. Right. So that can be purchased. Previous two, three videos are there on retrograde planets that can also be taken. Right. So that is the thing. Now coming back to the point. So Cheshtabal is there. The planet is powerful. Now sometimes some classics have written that exalted retrograde planet becomes like debilitated, debilitated retrograde planet becomes like exalted. I don't understand why they have written it. I do suspect if the Rishi have ever written it, maybe someone have put it in the book of the Rishi. Rishi have not written it. Because exalted planet is very powerful. Retrogression adds to the power. So what you are saying? Power plus power is power plus power is equal to powerless. So this is wrong. Exalted planet, when it becomes retrograde, it becomes even more powerful. On the other hand, when debilitated planet is retrograde, not debilitated planet is weak planet, the planet cannot give result. Okay. If the planet is retrograde, he becomes powerful also. So from debilitation, there is weakness, planet cannot give result. But from retrogression, the planet is powerful and now the planet can give result. So it is a normal planet. Debilitated retrograde is a normal planet. Exalted retrograde is an extremely powerful planet. This thing is there. Okay. Now, another thing that needs to be understood is whether retrograde planet is good or whether retrograde planet is bad. You should not decide it like this. Right? 
being good or bad that depends on rashi it does not this is the difference between exaltation and retrogression exaltation is also multiplied by 3 retrogression is also multiplied by 3 so they are equal no as i told exaltation is power also and good results also beneficial also retrogression is also power the planet may or may not be beneficial so you say if the planet is retrograde in exaltation sign own sign retrograde while being vargottam retrograde in friendly sign the planet gives good result it is strong so it is it the planet already is it will give strong and good result both so this is very good but if the planet is retrograde while being debilitated or retrograde while being into you know inimical rashi or retrograde while being into planetary war or retrograde while going into debilitated or bad navamsh in that particular scenario because of retrogression planet will be powerful but because of these other conditions planet will be negative also so this planet gives bad result and because it is powerful it gives very strong bad result right strong bad result producer planet it becomes so here you should not have to confuse you don't have to confuse retrograde planet is a powerful planet whether it is beneficial or not they should be decided based on what type of rashi the planet is occupying you know sometimes you know people also relate retrograde planets to past life karma also that if you have a retrograde planet you will have strong past life karma related to that planet now i don't have any retrograde planet in my horoscope rahu ketu are always retrograde but i can show you those horoscopes also if you use mean calculation rahu ketu will always remain retrograde if you take true calculations rahu ketu can become direct also i have no planet retrograde does it mean i have no karma then i should be i should have mukti i should have salvation i should not live in human body that if you say that i will at least have rahu ketu retrograde then i can show you many people who don't have rahu ketu retrograde also i have had three four clients who have consulted me who have rahu ketu direct also and all their planets direct also then what they are doing in human body if they are not having any karma at all so this is useless concept okay every planet indicates karma strong planets because they are strong indicates strong karma and retrogression is also strength so retrograde planet will also indicate strong karma so a strong karma is indicated by vargottam so rashi multrikon planet also right so though the principle is correct but the presentation of the principle is flawed right so it should be taken but with a pinch of salt right <laughs> that is a thing now <clears throat> coming back to retrogression also retrogression is fulfiller of desire it gives a strong result what type of strong result it will give that is dependent on rashi it gives results in multiplicity also and generally it indicates mistakes right like when retrograde planets are there related to a house you do multiple mistakes related to that house that you repent later on also now you add this with what you have already learned from my channel right for example if the fourth lord become retrograde then person generally is like that i have i went into a wrong relationship or i was dating a wrong person because of which i have suffered a lot right so this type of mistakes etc it is indicating if you watch my videos properly diligently take notes remember them take time to remember what i am teaching and then you add it with other videos and what i am teaching in other videos then you can become good astrologer better than those better than those astrologers who are sitting at some platform and making predictions and believe me you just have to take notes of what i am teaching and remember it and use all of it together and you will be better than 90% of the astrologers practicing right now right because i know what i am teaching and i know what i am dealing about at least this much realization so i am having so do that now talking of retrogression few things are there few more things i will want to talk about sometimes some people believe that because see retrogression is two things there are internal planets are mercury and venus external planets are mars saturn jupiter three planets are there external planets who become retrograde now sun and moon never become retrograde because sun is stationary the position of sun that you are looking in astrology is basically a position of earth and earth will never recede on its place so earth can never become retrograde in fact other planets also do not go in backward motion the thing is that the speed of like you know the earth and the planet is on the same line of vision 
and because the planet is a bit slower and earth is a bit faster it seems to be like the planet is going backward retrograde is an apparent motion it is not happening in reality now because moon is orbiting around earth not around sun and the position of sun is the position of earth only these two never become retrograde now regarding rahu ketu people think that rahu ketu is always retrograde which is not reality which happens only when you use mean nodes now mean is a approximate position of moon. why use approximate position of planet there was a time when approximate position of all the planets were used if you read the astronomical classics you will find that they are first telling us to find mean position of all planets then make it accurate because at that point of time there was no method of calculating the accurate position of planets only great astronomers who were supported by the king calculated the planetary positions and wrote books which other astrologers can also use they did not had access to a telescope and all of these things at that point of time mean position of all the planets were used but as the technology developed now we use true position of all the planets then why you are doing partiality with rahu i don't understand and people are murkh to such an extent itne gadhe log hain duniya mein if this is the reality this is the truth but people don't understand it but they will do a debate on why we should use mean node position how mean node position works etc etc are right matlab if someone proves that women who are you know who are victim of some misdoings are generally women who go to offices or who go to colleges etc can it be you know can you like take this information to prove that women who are going outside their home only are susceptible to crime and women who are not who are only living at home are not susceptible to crime if you do that though it can be true to some extent but making this inference is useless right but such such donkeys are there in the field of astrology that what to say <laughs> leave the point right so like every planet with the advancement of technology now we are calculating every planet in depth in detail and finding the true position of planets then why to do partiality with rahu ketu i don't understand even in earlier times also when there was time of eclipse when we had to exactly know the position of when the eclipse will start when the eclipse will end all the astrologers even in the earlier times also were taking pains to calculate the original true position of rahu ketu then why don't do it now when it is readily available i don't understand the such people who propagate that you should use mean position of planets only are doing more harm to astrology than any non believer will do right however leave this one now so my basic point was this external planets like jupiter saturn mars they start becoming retrograde when they are in fifth house from sun and their maximum retrogression is when they are seventh house from sun and they go out of retrogression when they are in ninth house from sun now simply put you will say that sir planets are to retrograde they are going in backward motion so the calculation you are saying from fifth house to ninth house so these three planets are slower than sun so of course they will not travel from fifth to ninth from sun but sun will travel from fifth to ninth to fifth from their position that's the reason so parashar have a particular shloka if i am not incorrect i cannot remember the chapter number but i remember the shloka faintly grahat purna phalam dadyu surya saptam ki sthita some shloka like that is there that means planet gives 100% result when they are in 7th to sun now you see 7th to sun is maximum retrogression right maximum epitome of retrogression is 7th to sun so that means retrograde planet gives 100% result now 100% result is only given by strong planet so retrograde planet is strong planet that is the point understood but all the results that i have told you with respect to retrogression up to this extent should be understood as this result is available in maximum when the planet is in 7th to sun this result is available only 80% when the planet is 6th and 8th house from sun and these results are only available in 70% when the planet is in 5th and 9th to sun and these the these planets are the planets saturn jupiter and mars only the first point now coming to 
this mercury and venus because they don't go into because they cannot go more than a particular like mercury cannot go more than one house away from sun and venus cannot go more than two house away from sun in that particular scenario they become retrograde in the same sphere now some people because for these planets generally planets when they are opposite to sun by planets i mean saturn jupiter mars Saturn, Jupiter, Mars become retrograde when they are in 5th to 9th house from Sun, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th house from Sun, they are retrograde and they are combust when they are with Sun. Right? So, two areas are there. In front of Sun, they are retrograde. Behind Sun, they are combust. Now, with this Venus and Venus and Mercury, because they cannot go in 7th to Sun, they can be retrograde and combust at the same point of time. Now, some people believe that when these planets are retrograde, they do not get the blemish of combustion. I know why. You are saying if a person is powerful, they cannot die. Being powerful and being immortal are two different things. So, retrograde planet is a very powerful planet. Okay. Combust planet is a planet whose rays are not reaching Earth. The results are not reaching Earth. So in this particular scenario, if the planet is powerful also, but the rays of the planets are not reaching Earth as well, that means if Mercury and Venus are retrograde and combust at the same point of time, then saying that they don't get the blemish of combustion is a useless point. Right? In this manner, you can also say the one who is supporting combustion can also say that they do not give result of retrogression then. So this is not the point. Combust planet is not able to give their result because the rays are not reaching. But is combust planet completely gone? Certainly not. The rays of the planets are not reaching. That means you cannot enjoy the result of the planet directly. You can enjoy the result indirectly. Someone else can help you get the result. The planet is retrograde means the planet is powerful. 100% result of the planet will come. So when Jupiter and Mercury are retrograde, sorry, when Venus and Mercury are retrograde also combust also, it means that the planet is very powerful. But Venus and Mercury are very powerful and whatever result they are indicating, natural signification based result where Mercury indicates knowledge, intelligence, education and Venus indicates marriage, enjoyment, luxuries, etc. And the result according to their house lordships, these results will be present in 100%. These results will be very strongly present in the life of the native. But because combustion is there, the result cannot be directly enjoyed by the native, but someone else will help native get these things. Someone will help native, for example, you say, Venus is the correct for marriage, right? So the person will have full enjoyment of marriage, but the life partner, they will not find themselves. Someone else will help them find the life partner, right? So they will have complete enjoyment of marriage, but it will be through arranged marriage. So these people are the one who have, who love their life partners, like they have had a love marriage, whereas in reality, they had an arrangement, this type of thing is there. For example, you say Venus is fourth house lot. Retrograde also, combust also. One have very strong result related to property. What do you mean by strong result related to property? I'll come to that. One have a very strong result related to property and this is strong result is not because of the native, right? Not the native have not had this property. It is not the property of the native. But you say this is the property of the native's father, which the native have inherited or it is the property of native sibling, which the native is now using. Right. So person is having 100% result, just the result is not obtained by himself, but he is getting the result through someone else. Now the last point that I told you, okay. the last point that I told you, the strong result related to fourth house or strong result related to property, what do you mean by strong result related? A strong result means what? Prominent result. So prominent means the person is having a prominent property, the big palatial property, luxurious property. This is prominent result one. Means in the area you have such a property that your property becomes like a landmark. Why, uh, like by what reasons it can become a landmark? It is the biggest property, it is the most luxurious property, it is the most beautiful property, or it is the property where maximum people come. Even if maximum courier person come to this property, that means you are purchasing things. That's why courier people are coming. You're purchasing things. That means you have money. Or the property is very popular because many gatherings keeps on happening in the property. That means you have a big family and multiple good gatherings keep on happening in the family. And sometimes someone marriage is there. Sometimes someone's birthday is there. So because of this reason, it can be prominent, right? So prominent result is there. 
secondarily the person have gained property quite early in life and live in that property up to their you know last days so then also because you have enjoyed property for very long right from your childhood up to the old age then also it is very prominent result related to property right so when we say prominent result related to property will it be there you should think sit and think because as i always say in astrology is an intellectual science we should sit and think what do a prominent result mean a very good property very beautiful property property flocked by many people a luxurious property palatial building this will mean a strong result related to property or person lives in property for very long the property is very costly the property have good market value the property have good land value property have good resale value property so beautiful people want to live there people want to visit there people want to purchase that right so this prominent result is enjoyed when the planet is powerful and retrogression adds to power so the result is very prominent result is very good result is like that that people want to have it this is also related to chesta so chesta bal means all your wishes and desires will be fulfilled related to that planet and secondarily people will also desire to have things like that so if you have a retrograde planet in fourth house or when you have a fourth lord retrograde then whatever are your wishes related to property those wishes will come to pass that is there but other people will also want to have property like you it will be so big so luxurious so well built that people will either want to purchase it or will be inspired from it to make their property that way also so such prominent result will be there right so this though regarding retrogression and regarding all of these things i can talk about hours as i told you i have taught it in a two day class in a two day webinar now each day of my webinar is at least two to and a half hours so minimum 4 hours maximum 6 hours i have taught over it multiple videos i have made before also right so we can talk about multiple things regarding retrogression but major major things i have covered which i think will help you in deepening your understanding related to astrology and how retrograde planet works how retrograde planets work right thank you for watching